Hello, swinging chicks and groovy cats, uh, finger popping daddies. Welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. We've been on vacation, we've been suffering everything. I got a new suit, and we hope you like it. But anyway, we have a special program for you tonight about blues elements. And you know, I have a quote from Dizzy Gillespie, and he said this I like this quote. He said, I spent a lifetime trying to learn what notes not to play. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Anyway, you know. It's, Ahmed Jamal was a master of not playing notes, you know, so like uh, you had to imagine what note it was. Anyway, that's an interesting quote because in jazz we always say any note is possible. So I'm going to be showing you some things about blues and about blues elements, and I'm going to be using a song from my book as an illustration. So here we go now with blues elements. I want to talk about what I played, Down Home Blues, which is an original composition, original blues. It's from my book, and it's a study on blues playing, but it's, it's a jazz blues. It's not just a basic blues, which uses strictly the blues scale. It uses other notes outside of the blues scale, but I want to talk about the elements of blues. That's the subject 
matter here. In other words, certain elements of blues that make any song sound like a, a blues oriented sound if you use these elements. And the first thing is if you apply the blues scale. Now the blues scale is going to have blue notes in it. And so the blue notes are the flat three, the flat five, and the flat seven. So we're in the key of F here. So the scale is, that's the major diatonic scale. So we're going to lower the third, we're going to lower the fifth to a flat five, and we're also going to lower the seventh to a flat seven. Now we're going to keep the fifth in there but we're, because it's so important. To, to the uh, fundamental aspect of, of harmony that we're going to play root flat three now, four, flat five, major or perfect fifth, flat seven or minor seven, back to one now. So there it is. Now we can create melodies from this using those notes, like uh, applying it might be something like this, a lick like this, you know, or like, like that, or the, that's all using the blues scale, and it sounds bluesy, and so we're using those notes in the blues scale, and we're applying them to melodic lines, ascending, descending. And the next step is to talk about grace notes. That's the next element. Let's say we'll move to that. The next important element about blues as pertaining to jazz piano, I think, are the grace notes. They're the next important thing. Now, grace notes are just notes that approach another note from below or above, usually a half step. You know, like usually it's like, like that. You see, it's sort of like imitating a guitar, which can bend the note just bending the string or moving the string up a half step. And, um, you know, we, uh, we can do it on a synthesizer or an electronic piano using the wheel. We can just like that. But on a piano, and it's, you know, we just have, that's the only way we can do it. We can, but it gives the, the, the blues flavor, you know, either from above or below, like below, above, down to the note. So I have this, I have on my, on my song, I have this, I like that. It would be like, you could even do it like this and have actually two notes approaching it, like it gives a bluesy sound. And then, like that. And it also can be like this. Or like, we have a note on top here that doesn't move, but it's and the uh, grace note is in here. So it's the note that's approaching the main note, or the primary note in the, in the, in the uh, scale, or in the melody. So it's just a grace note. But that is always going to create a blues sound. So that's an important blues element, the grace notes. The next important element of blues that I want to talk about are the use of Harmonies that are thirds and sixths. In other words, if you have the melody like this, like if you had this, this is Blue Monk, but it goes, you can harmonize it in thirds like that. So like, like that's harmonizing in, in, in thirds. Now harmonizing in sixths would be this. I had to go to a otherwise it makes it major, but anyway, you can get the idea that, the idea of like what it sounds like, like bluesy. And that's a tremolo there, but then, see how the third works really nicely and the sixth, are really giving you the sound of the blues. So I used it here on the, uh, let's see, it's the eighth measure, I guess, sixth, seventh measure, like that. And I used the, the grace note in there, you see. And then I used it. There's thirds again. And I used sixth here. Back to a third third there. So that really is 
An important aspect of blues is the use of the thirds and the sixths to harmonize the melody note. The next element I want to talk about, and this is actually an element that affects all jazz playing, but also particularly blues, but it's the turn. So in other words, you have like, like that phrase, instead of it just being this, or like with a grace note, it has this. So it's like usually 16th notes, one and two e and a, Three, one E, two E, and a three. That's the counting of it. So I had this phrase in the melody right at the beginning. Of it. See, so there you have it. The turn. Or, that's so important to jazz, all jazz playing. So like you'll uh, once you learn that turn kind of thing, and it's just so it's really uh, moving from it can move in, from the note like like that or like that or so up. There's various ways of doing it like or or all right. That's very bluesy sounding. I just want to clarify what the turn is so that you see it slowly. You can always slow down the video, but say I did this. So what did it what is it? If I did if I took it out it'd be like this. So now I have this. So it goes below the note up to the note, the target tone, down, and then down again to another target note. See, so it, it turns around, it can it turn around like this, like that, or, or, so you can analyze each one of those. It's like if that's the note, the target note, then it's above it, half step, half step above it, back down to it, like, or, um, well, I, there's so many ways to do it, but it's usually above the note or below it, approaching it, and a combination of using the note and other notes that are approaching. So that's, that's it, and you want to look at those on the score. The last element I want to talk about, blues element, and this may not be all the blues elements, but it's the ones I'm going to cover in this video, is the idea of using a note above the melody note to harmonize with it. In other words, like this. In other words, this is the mel melodic line here. Or like... So I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep that note constant. That's used a lot in blues. It's also used in classical music in a variety of ways, like... down there you see below so this is the melody like there so I used it uh, here right away like uh, see there's the melody da, da. and then here it is again that's the melody and this is a harmony note so that's another one Another one that's very common is the use of the upper harmony note, and it could be uh, even more than, than one note. It could be... It could be like this. See, the melody's down here. I'm using two harmony notes up here. Yeah, 
that. So now, we'll continue with one more thought about this. Here we go. This next concept is perhaps one of the most uh, difficult ones to get and challenging ones to get, but it's the idea of how you coordinate the two hands. What's going on in the left hand, what's going on in the right. My subscriber wrote to me, he said he's having trouble getting the right hand to sound correct. He's learned the left hand like this. Well, this is really a big issue because, you know, jazz is not as clearly defined as classical music. You don't play everything exactly the way it's written. So in order to coordinate the two hands, you have to be get some kind of a unification between the two in which one is playing basic time and the other one is freer, but they, at the same time they coordinate. So I tried to show you that in the second version or when I played the second chorus in which I did more in the left hand. In other words, I, instead of just going like this, that's the way it's written. I might have gone like this. In other words, I played things more off the beat. Now that's the difficult thing about really getting good at this, at good, getting good at playing jazz and, and any kind of, you know, piano, whether it be blues or whatever, is be able to get a certain independence within the two hands. Now you may say, what are the tricks to that? I don't have a quick answer other than the fact that at, when you play and you practice enough, eventually it begins to happen that you get more independence between the two hands. In other words, you begin to feel beat, the beat more, particularly if you use a metronome, and I always suggest that, like this, you know, just set, set it down there and get the beat going with the left hand, then try to get something going with the right hand so that it's freer. You, oh, good. Yeah, we make mistakes too, right? All right, so you want to get the right hand freer. Let's get this really straight, but you want to have the right hand to be freer. and I'm not really thinking about the beat so much, I'm feeling it. But when you use the metronome, then all of a sudden it start, it's controlling you. But you can, you can speed up a little bit, you can like pick up the phrase, you can slow it down a little bit. But as long as you stay with the basic thing and don't turn the beat around, don't slow it down so much that the beat turns around, now it's clicking on, say, uh, the off beats. Or if you're in two and four, it's clicking on one and three. You see, so to really get your two, two hands to coordinate, it's helpful to have the metronome and get it really good synchronized with the left hand and then try to get free with the right and then try to get free with both. So at times it'll cross. In other words, the right hand will be more right on the beat and the left hand will be more on, off the beat. And that's, that's really the, the secret of jazz rhythm and it's not easy to get and it takes a, a lot of practice and a lot of insight and the more you get get practice in and more understand this and listen to other players doing it, how they're comping in their left hand, then the better you will get at it. So I'll leave you with that. We'll, we'll uh, close up now. So wrapping up from the Jazz Ranch, I just want to say, you know, one of my subscribers said, why don't you ever take your dark glasses off? Well, I, it's because I have an eye problem and uh, too many years in Hollywood, you know, so I, I like to wear the dark glasses and I look better with them on anyway. But uh, I want to sign off and say uh, thanks for joining me. Please write to me if you have questions or comments. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, God rest his merry soul. Swing loose, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.